Good evening, everyone. This is Pradeep from Tech and Training Corporate Solutions once again with the last series that is 15 plus first series of uh, Chanakya and Daily Life. Before I go ahead and start this session, let me request each one of you once again that please go to pmscare.gov.in website to make any kind of donation that you feel like as per your interest. You can even scan the QR code, which is at the bottom right corner of the screen. Here, remember friends, the donation doesn't matter, but the act of kindness does. You never know who you're going to be helping with your donations. So please make a choice today to donate this amount either to any other organization of your choice or to PM's Care. But here, do make donations today itself. Let me talk about now the speaker of the day, that is Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai. Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai is a PhD from Mumbai University, has done extensive research on Cortelia Foundation from Chinmay International Foundation, Kerala, under the guidance of Dr. Gangadharan Nair, Dean of Adi Shankara Sanskrit University. He is also an MA in Sanskrit. On the popular side, Dr. Pillai is known for his internationally best-selling corporate Chanakya book and other books in Chanakya series. With nearly 25 years of experience, Dr. Pillai is a leadership mentor, coach, trainer who trains leaders and aspirants from various fields, including corporates, politics, academics, and public service. He is a certified management consultant from the International Institute of Management Consultants. Dr. Pillai is a director of SPM Foundation and founder director of Atma Darshan Private Limited, a spiritual tourism company, and Chanakya Anvik Shiki Private Limited, a leadership training and mentoring institute. He has been recently appointed as a deputy director of Chanakya International Institute of Leadership Studies and Autonomous Institute based in University of Mumbai, Kalina campus. He has written nearly 200 articles and papers for various magazines, newspaper, and journal. He has given TEDx on how to become rich rich. He has also hosted radio shows Ask Chanakya on Moksha channel of World Space Satellite Radio. He is visiting faculty in prestigious institute in India and abroad, including IIT, IIM, and in Indian Institute of Science, among others. He has been a trainer and strategy consultant to over 500 organizations like Indian Army, Navy, Air Force, Indian Police, various NGOs, private public sector, and government organization. He has been awarded the prestigious Sardar Patel International Award 2009 and Avishkar Chanakya Innovation Research Award 2013 for his research and contribution in the field of management and industrial development. Recently, he was honored with the Lokmat National Education Leadership Award as the best professor in philosophy. He is rated amongst top 30 Indian management thinkers globally by thinkers50.com. Dr. Pillai is the best-selling author of 10 books. His first book, Corporate Chanakya, has been the bestseller list since its launch in 2010 and used it as a textbooks in various business schools in India and abroad. The book has been the unique distinction of being made into audiobook, world's first management film on Chanakya's teaching. Chanakya speaks and translated into 10 regional languages. His second book, Chanakya's Seven Secret of Leadership, along with Dr. Shivanandan, ex DGP Maharashtra Police, has created waves in corporate world since its release. His best seller book, Chanakya in You, got him various awards, including the India's most popular cross. Word Raymond Book of the Year 2016. His fourth book, Katha Chanakya, was first book to be launched internationally in New York, USA in the year 2016. The fifth and sixth books of Chanakya in Daily Life and Anvik Shiki Inside Chanakya's Mind has been appreciated all around in media and has been in the focus list of almost all publishing retailers. His seventh book, Chatur Chanakya is his first children's book and is making waves across India already. His eighth book, The Spoke Chanakya, is freshly out in the market but has made its way on the bestseller list already. His ninth book, Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich, has gained popularity amongst the business community. His tenth book, How to Write a Book and Make It Bestseller, is his only non Chanakya book and talks about how he consistently made all his books bestsellers. 
So friends, I can talk on and on because his profile is even longer, but I would like to limit this introduction to this and I would now request Dr. Chanakya to go ahead and talk about the Chanakya and daily life. Once again, let me remind you that this is one way communication. You can use the question and answer panel to ask questions and towards the end, please do give us the feedback about this session. And uh, towards the end, we'll also be sharing certain uh, details of uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan Pillai so that just in case if anyone of you want to get in touch with him personally and uh, approach him for any kind of sessions or guidance, you are free to do so. So thank you very much, friends, and over to Dr. Pillai. Thank you. So once again, uh, a warm good evening to each one of you for joining this particular uh, program. As uh, Pradeep ji rightly said, you know, uh, already 15 days are over and today we are going to be talking a non-technical kind of a subject. So thank you Pradeep ji for uh, inviting me into your particular program. In fact, I've been also trying to learn some tips about how to use Microsoft and all the skills that he's uh, imbibing for what we have a national project called Skill India. So thank you so much. It's an honor. And please uh, uh, accept my uh, salutations to each one of you because today it's going to be your first non-technical session. Probably this will be more a strategy session. So from T to S, from technical to strategy, and both are important to succeed in life. So uh, the time that we have, I'm going to uh, do three things. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is going to introduce about Chanakya because Chanakya is such a vast topic. I've been uh, in this particular space for almost 20 years and still I find you know that uh, the journey is only beginning. So I'm going to introduce about Chanakya. The second thing I'm going to do is speak on the topic which is Chanakya in daily life. So this is uh, the book uh, that I have written on that same topic I'm going to be talking and third of course is the question answers. So of course if you have any questions please make a note of it and I will request Pradeep ji uh, towards the end to actually moderate those questions as well. And I know you are all turned out in huge numbers uh, to listen to the wisdom of the great Acharya of our country that is Chanakya. So with that friends, let me begin by introducing Chanakya uh, in a true sense. Okay, uh, we always say, you know, this person re doesn't require an introduction and then we start. But actually the person sitting on the chair does require an introduction. But in, the, in Chanakya's case, truly he doesn't require an introduction, at least in India, at least Bharat mein to because many people may not know it. My teacher, uh, Dr. Gangadhar Nair, who taught me the Artha Shastra, and Dr. Shubhada Joshi, under whom I did my PhD, uh, very nicely said that you know there is a Chanakya in each one of us. You know, we need to awaken him. So one is the Chanakya, the person, and the second is the Chanakya, the thought process. So there are two things, Chanakya the person, I'm going to talk about it, but the second is the thought process. And I've been very fortunate that at the Mumbai University, we actually teach that, you know, the whole thought process of how to think like a leader. And um, uh, we have actually uh, Naresh uh, Chandraji, who has been the pro vice chancellor and one of the greatest academicians also uh, being part of this particular program. So if Naresh ji is around, uh, please accept my salutations also, sir. He's a great teacher himself. And I'm sure many of you in this particular uh, uh, program are also teachers and accomplished professionals in your own way. So let me start with the Chanakya, the person first. He lived in fourth century in India, which is roughly 2400 years ago from today. He was known by three names, Vishnagupta, Kautilya and Chanakya. And he was responsible for two major defeats. One is he defeated Dhananand, who was then the king of Magad kingdom or Magad dynasty and he made Chandragupta Maurya uh, as a king. That's why he's known as a kingmaker. So he defeated uh, uh, Dhananan. Uh, the, the place was Patliputra, which is modern day Patna. The second person whom he defeated was Alexander. Not many people know that Alexander the Great, who was on his journey to conquer the whole world, was actually defeated not by a king, but by a strategist. So remember this very famous uh, uh, statement that comes in the television serial called Chanakya. By Dr. Chandrapakash Devedi. It is said, Sikshak Sadhara Nahi Hota. Sikshak Sadhara Nahi Hota. Pralai or Nirman Dono Uske Godme Khelte. A teacher is not ordinary. Creation or destruction both play in the lap of a teacher. So, who is Chanakya? He is a great teacher and therefore he created many, many kings. Of course, we know Chandragupta Maurya as the first student, but he is not the only student. 
you know teachers cannot teach only one person teacher has to teach a whole class and if you are the head of a university or a college you have to take care of thousands and sometimes lakhs of students so he was the head of department of political science at takshashila university political science or arthashastra or rajneeti was meant for leaders so he created many leaders what is interesting is that chandragupta maurya's grandson was ashok ashok who went on to become one of the greatest ambassadors of our culture abroad he spread buddhism across the world the philosophy of buddhism and the same ashoka was also trained by chanakya but what is important is that he documented all his life teachings in two books one is called kautilya's arthashastra and the other is called as chanakya neeti so we know about these two books and uh, both these books have been fantastic uh, because they continue to guide a lot of people till our generation so think about this that so many leaders have used it not only in india but across the globe and i have seen this when i was in germany at heidelberg university there also i found a german translation of arthashastra which was done in 1929 so it is not that you know the uh, ancient indian wisdom was only known to indians it was also known across the globe so it is india's contribution to the world and which are the political people the people in governance they know that chanakya was a thinker that you cannot avoid so i will always call chanakya as a universal man a person whose ideas and principle appeal to the whole universe not just to one country one era or one generation and therefore you know somebody said about him he is a yuga purush a person who created an era by itself and who continues to guide every era so when i actually uh, got uh, to know about kautilya arthashastra when i read it for the first time i realized what a treasure of knowledge our country has got i studied my uh, did my ma in sanskrit then i did my phd under shubhda joshi madam at the university of mumbai and then i have been so fortunate thanks to all the authorities of the university that today i actually had an institution over there where we teach leadership as a subject so look at it the journey has been the ancient indian model now being taught in a modern format so this is what i would invite all of you that after this particular session also please start getting introduce yourself to the the, the person that is chanakya and the knowledge that is there in the arthashastra many of us know about certain principles of chanakya like samadana danda veda everybody has heard about it or you know dushman ka dushman dost ya yeah, enemies enemy is a friend all these are very popularly known but we don't know beyond that if you study the arthashastra it has got 6000 sutras 6000 is a big number sutras are like formulas you know it's like we have nyaya sutras we have patanjali yoga sutra or panini sutra so sutras are basically short sanskrit verses they are there in pali language also ardha magadi also so sutra is a format in which the knowledge was uh, uh, given in a capsule format okay so 6000 formulas of how to run a kingdom we are also using that to run an organization maybe an education institution a company or uh, a district so i have been fortunate to even teach district administrators so coming back uh, why am i telling you all these things if you study chanakya you will never be the same person again definitely success is something that will follow you i have seen it in my life as pradeep sir was so rightly introducing i have written 15 books on chanakya and all 15 books are best sellers can you believe it so i also wrote a book how to write a book and make it a best seller so the whole idea is that how did it happen so there is a process but there is a strategy also please understand people know about the process but not people know much about strategy chanakya is a strategy guru yes my dear friends that's the kind of an impact that chanakya has left on india and the whole world of course so that is the introduction of chanakya I also want to tell you that Arthashastra, the six thousand sutras, has got ideas like how to select leaders, how to train leaders, how mantri parishad or the uh, you know the ministers have to be selected, how the criminals in a society are caught, the law and order situation. It also talks about military strategy, foreign policy, criminal psychology. It talks about economics, how to create revenue, how to make the country wealthy. It talks about war. There are more than one hundred and fifty topics that is covered in one single book. So as one scholar said, you know. Chanakya is not a person; he is a university. And Kautilya Arthashastra is not a book; it is a library. Again, I have been fortunate by the grace of God and all my teachers that actually I had the uh, the privilege of learning and now teaching the Arthashastra. So, with that, 
the first point I told is I'm going to introduce Chanakya and what is Arthashasa, the knowledge part of it. But now we come to the topic that has been announced to everyone that is Chanakya in daily life. Uh, you know, uh, Chanakya in daily life, many may wonder that has he got some tips about how to use our daily life today, especially when you know uh, the days that he lived in and the days we are living today are very different. So in those particular days, there was no electricity, there was no technology, there was no Microsoft, okay? there was no Microsoft Excel, there was no PowerPoint, there was no internet around. And today, even though we are under complete lockdown, okay, so even though we are under complete lockdown, we can still operate, you know, so we are doing this particular Microsoft team and learning. Uh, people are on uh, calls, even at home, the entertainment is going on. So many wonder, you know, is the Chanakya's wisdom or what Chanakya told 2400 years ago relevant today? And I said, yes, it is relevant. And I'll explain to you how it is relevant. The first point is that a lot of things evolves with every generation. You know? Human beings are naturally born with something called as intelligence. Har vyakti ko bhagwan ne kuch na kuch buddhi diye. Of course, that's a joke that everybody doesn't use their intellect. Buddhi hai, lekin buddhi maan nahi bante. That's a different story. But every generation will try to make things better and better and better and better. Okay. So definitely what Chanakya generation was and today it is absolutely evolving. And every generation will only make it better. Like what you have is God's gift to you. And what you do with what you have is your gift to God. In the same way what your previous generation gave to you is their gift. Because they have done all the hard work and handed over to you. But now you have to make it better. That is your gift to the next generation. So you will see that today we have technology. I think our children are already born in technology. They will only make it better. But please understand these are all external evolution. But unfortunately the human mind remains the same. It doesn't change with all the developments. For example, today we are talking about mental health. The mind is the same. Okay, In the olden days also we had stress. And today also we have the stress. And many of you must be watching the Mahabharata that is going on in Durdashan nowadays. So Arjuna also had depression. He also had a problem of you know decision making. So on the Kurukshetra war, the greatest warriors of all time, Arjuna, actually developed cold feet. Pata nahi kya karna hai. Same thing happens with us also. You know, when we see the problems of life, we say, arre, 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 no, no, this is not for me. So if you look at it, it is not what is with you or around you it is how you tackle it the person and the mind is more important than the situation okay so what is important to know in chanakya's uh, life we can apply in daily life is that how should be your manasthiti okay there are two, two sthitis one is called paristhiti and the other is called manasthiti paristhiti kuch bhi ho jaye agar manasthiti theek hai to hum Usko kar sakte hai. Whatever be the situation around, if you have it the right state of mind, then you can tackle any situation. And unfortunately, the lot of people, the situation is very good outside, but they are not very good inside. Now it is the other way around, you know, a lot of uncertainty outside, but uncertainty should not come inside your mind. You should be certain. So you look at the formula. Technology evolution has happened from Chanakya's time, but now he is saying how to tackle the mind. So friends, what I'm going to talk is that how we can use all the strategies of Chanakya in our daily life. It doesn't matter whether you're a housewife, it doesn't matter whether you're a chairman of a company or the vice chancellor of a university or the president or a prime minister of a country or the chief of an armed forces. Everybody finally has to deal with his or her mind. So Manko Kese, how to use your intellect, mana buddhi. This is the greatest weapon that you have to, to fight any battle in life. Remember that there's an army general of uh, India who said from the Indian army that uh, I know this for sure. Think about this great uh, that the man behind the machine is more important than the machine. You have given the guns, but the person, how he operates is more important, the mind. Therefore, the training of the mind is what Chanakya talks about. So friends, if you want to know about all these things, you can read my books, you can go to Google and search all my books. All the books are available online. 
and don't worry even if it is not available because of lockdown they are all available on kindle versions so you can download all the books and you can see how we can use chanakya's uh, actual principles of uh, management and leadership in our daily life so all the books are available and pradeep sir so beautifully pointed out corporate chanakya this year it is the 10th year anniversary and we have sold more than 10 lakh copies of all my books think about it it is all because i have been able to adapt the knowledge of chanakya in daily wisdom in today's generation so specifically about the topic please look at this book okay you can find this a very beautifully cover page book uh, it is called chanakya in daily life uh, you can go and search chanakya in daily life with my name radha krishnan pillai so what i'm going to talk is a few tips from this particular book but you can go and read the book later on and of course uh, uh, there are kindle versions also available so you can download it or whatever you want to do okay so in this particular book chanakya in daily life i was thinking what should i speak on and interestingly my goodness there are you know more than 100 plus chapters so i didn't know where to start from and what to do so you know totally it is divided into six uh, sorry three areas totally 69 chapters and more than 100 points of how to be successful in daily life so it talks about personal life it talks about professional life and of course it talks about family life so as an individual i think we have to balance these three roles one is the personal life that's i me myself your own mind when you are with yourself but there is a professional life you know the skill the companies that we work in the institution that we work in so that's a professional life but finally you have to deal with your family members also so how do you balance on a daily basis that is what the book chanakya in daily life is all about so what i decided is that friends um, since this is has a limited time you know we can't go for 5 6 hours that's not the point so in the given time that we have i said let me give you five plus two formulas what you can do in the daily life so five plus two what is this five plus two formula you know whenever we do a powerpoint presentation everybody asks you know how many points how many takeaways are there <laughs> and typically all our people the, the professional generation that we say that okay gyan mat dena bhaiya mere ko actionable dena you know it's good to have knowledge but give me a to do list a takeaway you know so i said you know let me tell you right away that i'm going to give you five takeaways plus two extra bonus you know seven is a very lucky number for everyone right saadi ke uh, you know the saat uh, phere hote hain then we have the seven colors of the rainbow the seven notes of the music so everything is seven 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 uh, and you know i have also written a book called chanakya seven secrets of leadership so i thought you know it's very easy to remember the number seven and i'm going to give you five plus two points that you can practically apply from today onwards and practice chanakya in daily life but why is this five plus two why didn't you just tell you know seven i'll tell you the reason because five points are to be practiced continuously throughout your life till you are alive but two points are specifically about how to manage uncertain times and that is the current situation especially with the covid and the corona virus happening around everybody is so uncertain pata nahi future ka kya hoga then i thought let me give you five things that is general everyday thing and two things that you can use right now right here especially in the uncertain times so with that let me start with the first point okay so among 5 plus 2 i'm starting with the first point the first point since it's a daily life you know it's a daily routine the first thing chanakya talks is what do you do in the morning subah subah uthke kya karna hai okay now interestingly we have to understand the state of your mind in the morning determines how the quality of the day is very very important what is the quality and the state of your mind in the morning determines the whole day imagine you start by fighting with somebody and then you go to office you had it <laughs> and especially if it's a teacher you know he or she had a fight with a spouse his or her spouse and went to correct the exam papers got it so you always say you know students always tell you are pata nahi teacher ghar pe se jhagda karke aake mere ko marks de rahi hai kya the whole idea is that ki basically if you start the morning with what chanakya has told you will have a very very positive now let me give you a surprise okay do you know what time chanakya wants the leader or the king to wake up get any guesses a lot of people ask me you know maybe 4 o'clock in the morning maybe you know brahma mohorat early and all those things you would be surprised listen to the answer carefully the leader according to chanakya 
is supposed to wake up at morning 1:30 you may wonder 1:30 morning hai ya night hai of course before the world wakes up the leader has to wake up yes it comes in book number 1 chapter number 19 of kautilya's arthashastra raja pranidhi the daily activities of a king the rules of a king it is called dinacharya of a raja dina means day charya means what are the activities oh already you say oh my goodness thou gone i don't want to listen to chanakya in daily life i sleep at 1:30 and especially because we don't have schedules after the lockdown you telling me to wake up at 9:30 oh to sone ke time pe tum kya jaga rahe is understand this i'm not making you frightened what i'm saying to tell is that a leader or any successful person actually wakes up earlier than others that is true even modern psychologists have confirmed this that if you have good quality sleep okay it is not just the quantity of sleep it is also the quality of sleep so if you have good quality of sleep it is naturally you can get up in the morning fresh Isn't it? As there is a saying, "Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise." But the other side is also true. According to Arthur Shastra, the king is supposed to sleep at nine o'clock. Okay, so nine o'clock night he has to sleep. Wake up at one thirty, and afternoon he can sleep for one and a half hours. So totally is given six hours. Okay, so today unfortunately because of electricity we can't differentiate between morning and night. Isn't it true? So I will use the word very carefully. Unfortunately. there are a lot of fortunate things about electricity we can be so productive a lot of things we can do but what happens is that somewhere we have lost the natural cycle you know if you look at the nature if you look at the animals and birds the moment the sunset is done they are gone to sleep they eat their food early and go to sleep so what is important is to understand the principle that the early to bed and early to rise so don't worry about it so i'm not telling you to wake up at 1:30 but definitely wake up much before others do. so what is the right time for waking it all depends from person to person also okay but i know certain communities for example you may have certain friends or many of you over here who are actually from many parts of south india especially i have seen that in the tamil communities okay it is very natural for people to wake up and when i say tamil i don't mean only the state called tamil nadu i see that in many uh, temple towns If you look at you know temples, so for example, if you go to Shirdi for that matter, or if you go to Pandharpur in Maharashtra, it's six o'clock. Now you'll be surprised; these people get up early because it's a regular routine. Okay, so they get up early. So we in Bombay and many of the metro cities may not have that privilege because we are so tired working professionally and travel and everything. But at least the golden rule is that in the morning, at least try to get up half an hour early than what you get up. Ideal is to wake up by five o'clock. Ideal, ideal. Four or five is good, but let's say you have a habit of waking up at seven o'clock. Nothing wrong, but start at least by waking up five, uh, sorry, half an hour. Maybe at you know if you're waking up at seven o'clock, six thirty. Nothing wrong. Don't try to force yourself. In fact, I remember somebody told that you know I want to get up at three uh, o'clock. I said don't, don't, never do that, because don't give your mind a jerk. It's it's very very important to know that don't give your mind a jerk. So slowly start thinking big, but start start slowly. So what I'm saying is that early morning, the first thing Chana Kya does that please wake up early and remember it has to be self-discipline. It is not telling others to wake you up. You know, initially it's okay with the mobile alarm and you're telling everybody, but you have to understand it has to become a part of a biological clock, a mental clock. Now Chana Kya says how to wake up. He specifically tell wake up with sound of music. Yeah. So remember, imagine you are getting up in the morning. And you are listening to metal rock music. Tan 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 tan. Oh, everybody is. Oh my goodness, what's happening? So it is generally soft music. Okay. So even when you set up your alarm clock, okay, don't have this dangerous sounds. You know, like 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 ghost sounds and all those things. Because moment a negative sound comes in, it changes the mood of your mind. Therefore, you know, in our Indian classical system, there is something called as morning ragas, and they are very slow. and you know in many cultures especially in indian uh, communities we find that they they actually uh, wake up by listening to certain shlokas or a certain hymns remembering the god etc so when you wake up the state of the mind if you have music and maharashtra we have something called a bhupali so you wake up by listening to the song and the devotional you know songs and devotional poems and compositions of great saints 
So first thing in the morning from tomorrow on was try to wake up a little bit early. Half an hour is a good practice depending on what your routine is. But then the moment you get up, sit down calmly. Don't rush. You know, people, especially in Bombay, when uh, it's working, you know, they just get up. Ha, ha, ha. Half of your energy is lost. So wake up, sit down quietly, listen to music if you want. Idea of music is to calm down your mind. And then we say, start with the attitude of gratitude. Start with the attitude of gratitude. Thank God that I've woken up. It's a beautiful day. Don't complain early morning. Whatever it is, remember you are alive. Not everybody who sleeps actually wakes up alive. Isn't it true? So wake up with the attitude of gratitude. So what does it mean? The frame of mind that you have in the morning is very important. So Chanakya in daily life starts with morning. Let's say have a humble beginning in the morning. Calm, quiet, don't fight with everyone. Then of course you get up, you do your daily activities, fresh up. Remember, spend some time spiritual activities. What are the spiritual activities you define? You probably lead, uh, read a shloka or maybe if you are uh, from any different uh, uh, community, religion, tradition, there are a lot of spiritual books available. So maybe Bhagavad Gita, like I uh, every day in the morning try and read Swami Vivekananda. Okay, or I may read uh, some uh, great compositions in Sanskrit. So it depends on whatever your culture is. I know people who even get up in the morning and read the biographies of great leaders. I know of a person who actually read Ambedkar's bi uh, biography every day, little by little. You know, wow, so the, he is my hero. Good. Somebody in Ganeshwari, you know, in uh, Tamil Nadu, there's a Tirukkural. And in the north, uh, Kabir Ke Dohe or Ramayan or Bhav. So whatever, choose. So your spiritual activities should be not only ritual, but something that gives you a little bit of a spiritual thoughts. Okay, so you are ready. So first point I wanted to make, is that when you get up in the morning, the state of your mind has to be very calm and quiet. You have to be proactive. Don't wake up lazy. Your body requires rest, your mind requires rest. But after that, wake up. Before somebody tells you to wake up, you should be able to get up on your own also. So over a period of your time, that becomes a habit. 21 days you practice it, it becomes a habit as they say. The first thing is morning activity. Second important thing, every day, every day spend some time in thinking. You wonder what is this thinking time? Yes, I'm talking specifically about something called as thinking time. You know what, my dear friends, many of us don't take thinking as a very serious activity. Because we said thinking, you know, please understand thoughts doesn't mean you are thinking. Okay, let me tell you, just because your mind has thoughts doesn't mean you're thinking. Thinking is a very serious activity. Like, for example, when you're doing research, okay, when you're studying for exam, you're using your intellect and it's a very, very, very uh, energy consuming activity. So that's why you'll see, you know, when students are giving uh, exams, when you're preparing a project or, you know, when some uh, really serious thing is happening, you feel tired also. You know? Especially that is why you have to tell me that thinking is a very serious activity. The Chanakya says every day spend quality time in thinking. Like I do that, you know, I sit in my room and I tell my family also, disturb So what do you do in the morning? Sit down, assimilate your thoughts, make a priority list, daily to-do list. What is the thing that you want to do, achieve today, etc, etc. So Chanakya is a strategic thinker. So every day morning when you're ready, make a plan for the day. Plan out your work and work out your plan. Yes, that's important, especially if you are in very senior positions or in leadership positions or responsible positions. You are multitasking, you have many things to do. A housewife also for that matter has got 10 things to do. And if you're working from home, you have to do this and that also. So in the morning, get up and do some thinking. Unfortunately, we are not trained in thinking. Okay, we say thinking is normal. No, no, no. Thinking is a subject by itself according to Chanakya. It is called Anvikshiki. Unviction, the process of right strategic thinking, logical methodology. If you want to know more about it, you can read my book Inside Chanakya's Mind, Anvikshiki and the Art of Thinking. Okay, you can read that book later on. But let me tell you, we get mixed up with two activities of the mind and the intellect. It is called worrying. We worry a lot rather than thinking a lot. So chintan or chinta me farak hai. I repeat it, chinta or chintan me farak hai. Hum karte hai chinta, karna chahiye chintan. Don't worry, start thinking. So this is the thing you have to do. So slowly, slowly you start, many people don't know, but over a period of a time, you will know by practice how to think properly. Okay, there are thinking gurus also. Like we have a flute guru, we have a dance guru, we have a science teacher. Do you know there are teachers of 
how to think and they were logicians in this particular country the only activity the profession was thinking when i heard about it for the first time that cha thinking as a job yes even today in many multinational companies are seen that departments like r and d department is actually a thinking department they supposed to think analyze and give ideas many professionals sitting over here will also know that the importance of thinking okay the second thing is that spend quality time in thinking when do i think depends on you early morning is the best but sometimes you know you are busy in the morning so maybe in the afternoon or maybe in the evening some people like thinking when they are doing exercise or jogging or walking okay it's a very serious act don't gossip just keep yourself calm and think take a problem and think in fact ratan tata one of the greatest industrial leaders of our generation has been spending quality time in thinking per day in fact even once told you know that i spend 5 to 6 hours every day in thinking when i say 5 to 6 hours so yeah that's the role that's my job thinking as a job so on a daily basis thinking as a priority so spend out some time you may not spend 5 6 hours but at least start with half an hour ideally you should think minimum 1 hour a day okay so that's the second thing third thing you have to do on a daily basis is study it's called swadhyaya and you know in our generation we have got totally confused with studying means going to school colleges and universities and unfortunately education system is almost like an examination system thanks to the britishers you know so they started the education system the so called modern education system where examination was a pattern and unfortunately that examination is important evolution uh, evaluation of the students is important but are we actually teaching them how to think or are, are we just making them into one you know, standard pattern i say is also not so information is not thinking anyway so what is studying so every day you should study as if you were a student student you are supposed to be studying full time anyways but even if you are a professional at 45 50 60 years old you have to do swadhyaya a king on a daily basis supposed to study 3 hours even 3 hours per day the most busiest man in the kingdom is supposed to study and people like you and me we also should know how to study what do you mean by study yes of course you can go on to do formal courses like this 15 days also which pradeep sir has been taking that's also a study then you can read books journals magazines okay but study and research deep study so select your subject see newspaper reading is good as a start for gathering information google is also good but as somebody said google search is not research google search is not research google search is a starting point of research so my dear friends why am i telling you that you know on a daily basis make a time table we only make time tables and schedules when we were small and especially school and college is decided but when you get more mature please understand it's very important to study on a daily basis i do that you know i have got so many books at home i got 7000 books on my personal collection and many people like yes a padha hua hai kya bolta hai ki dekho sab kya hai maine padha hai then i decide which are the book which i have to go for deep study and spend time every day on studying it is whether a formal student or an informal student that's very very important okay now comes the fourth point okay documentation very important documentation See, you know, friends, India as a country, as a culture, always believe in record keeping. If it is not for record keeping, we wouldn't have it. That the Mahabharat, or the Ramayana, or the Kautilya Darpa Shastra. You know, uh, unfortunately, we used to do diary writing many gen- many years ago. When we were small, we were told to diary, write, diary, write, diary, write. But unfortunately, that habit is gone away. Okay. But Chanakya said, "Likhte raho, likhte raho, likhte raho." and you'll be surprised i do this every day in the morning i write in the evening also i write and I, when i say writing of course i write books and everything but you know i it is like keeping myself uh, a habit of saying what i have done for today and analyze it maybe it just takes 15 minutes you to think through aaj maine kya karna chahiye tha aaj kya kiya what i was supposed to do and then whatever your learnings the one tip that i give is that at least before you go to bed every day write one page document what are your learnings what do you do and all those things and i have seen business communities and ladies at home also doing documentation of daily accounts that's a good habit or a bit of a time and it builds up you look at it after maybe one year and suddenly you will see 365 and you will see your own progress from this to this so a lot of analysis can happen so what i am suggesting you is that you know every day write something and you never know you write little 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 and tomorrow it can become a book so you are also becoming an author so chanakya is saying write every day it's very important documentation the fifth point which i want to keep it very generic is about parenting parenting yeah on a daily basis yeah fortunately in our country family is our base isn't it true family is our base whether you are married or unmarried 
that's a different question but you are born in a family isn't it and of course when you are married when you become a parent parenting becomes a very key role so my dear friends i just want to tell you that chanakya has actually given us ideas of how to be a good parent yeah so there's a sutra that comes in chanakya niti it says till 5 years love your child unconditionally next 10 years discipline the child and after 15 years consider him or her as your friend think about this chanakya is telling that till 5 years discipline you uh, love your child even if a child actually breaks your latest mobile you can't do anything for the next 10 years discipline the child you know tell them what is right and wrong discipline doesn't mean hitting the child that's not the point the idea is to correct them and children should be also trained to listen to no children if they are got into the habit of listening yes 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 then they'll become a spoiled child dekho bachcho ko layak banao nalayak nahi very important so what is important is that if we are a uh, child and remember one thing when i say child it's very important to understand that till your parents are around you're still a child you may be 60 years old no? it doesn't matter but your parents are still around so listen to your parents you may be a parent yourself you may be a grandparents but as long as your parents are still there the child in you never grows up and it should not because you know the head of the family is always your parents i remember once somebody asked me you know okay, who all are there in your family you know, i my parents my wife my kids acha acha your parents stay with you i said no i stay with my parents this is something that i learned from my teachers also you know is understand this your parents don't live even if they are old and retired okay on a daily basis this is my tip on a daily basis do something about parenting so if you have a parent serve them if the parents are not around at least call them up every day you know some parents may be away but your parent is always and let me tell you the older you grow you understand the value of parenting and if you are a parent whose children are small give quality one hour to your children so parent should spend time with their parents and parents should actually spend time with their children also so on a daily basis okay so the fifth point is that spend quality time with your family and especially parenting is a responsibility parenting is not just a biological activity your bachcha paida ho gaya to give value culture education and direction in life is a duty of a parent that's a daily responsibility so remember our friends i just spoke about the five points I'll, i will uh, recollect it morning activity start with the attitude of gratitude okay with a nice state of mind the second is quality thinking okay half an hour to one hour if you can spend on thinking third is study on a daily basis you have to do, keep a good quality book with you not just you know gossip magazines and all those things whatsapp and all is fine it's good but the thing is that have a good quality research book we are all educated people we all know what is the world is about but do deep thinking through studying swadhyaya fourth one which i told is documentation every day write something 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 you never know when you are writing you are actually creating history think about it you know mahatma gandhi's letters are today records for many leaders across the globe so documentation the fifth one i told you is parenting on a daily basis if your parents are around please take care of them you know our prime minister also says you know even in covid the first responsibility take care of the senior citizens parenting if you are a parent with a child okay so i told you five and i'm going to tell you two more remember about seven and these two things are about the current situation especially with so much uncertainty around with so much uncertainty the first step about uncertainty is about daily activity you know sir uncertainty in activity yes let me tell you my dear friends there is an arthashastra sutra which says if there is no economic activity still there should be activity let me repeat that even if there is no economic activity there should be some activity so for example you are sitting at home right and many of us can't go out and and especially people are working in production and manufacturing i mean it's different there is no work but that doesn't mean you become lazy luckily people like us you know who are educated we can use the computers we can use the mobile at least there is some activity but chanakya says if there is no activity outside do some activity inside okay so for example i have been getting up half an hour earlier than i used to today on an average i do 3 to 4 webinars per day in the lockdown in one month i wrote two books i been actually writing books lot of things. so what i'm saying that you have to push yourself to be active on a daily basis unfortunately a lot of people are uncertain is now mera job kam hoega you know mera salary chala, job chala jayega salary kam hoga all those uncertainties will always be there but remember one thing a person who is productive will always have a job so today a lot of conditions which we are not sure of 
But remember, on a daily basis, don't become lazy. Laziness is a dangerous habit. Once it gets into you, you can't do anything. That was Swami Vivekananda said, no, wake up, arise and stop not till the goal is achieved. So make smaller, smaller goals for you. Read a book, you know, do something creative. Maybe take up a hobby and learn something online. So if there is no economic activity, still be active. And when the economic activity starts, go and be overactive now. Become more productive. Many of you must have got salaries without working. Now when you go back, do double the work with the same salary. So that's about activity. The fifth point, you know, even there is no economic activity in the uncertain times, you should be active. And the last point, like the seventh point is called PPS. P P S. What does PPS mean? What you should do on a daily basis in times of uncertainty? Be positive, be practical, and be spiritual. Be positive, be practical, and be spiritual. What does that mean? See, you have to have a positive state of mind because early morning when you read the newspapers, and I do that also, but I don't read newspaper the first activity. I actually read the newspaper after three hours after I wake up. So I wake up early, until eight o'clock in the morning. I don't even touch the newspaper. You know why? Because so much, itna mar gaye, itna ye ho gaya, ho gaya. that's a fact. So I, I'm not blaming the media because the media is a strength of democracy. So we should get informed. But the thing is that after looking at it, we should look at things positively also. Yes, there are deaths, there are problems. But I think if you look at the percentage of people who have come out of the problems is also big. It's not a small number. We have to be careful. We have to be staying at home. Everything the government is saying we should do. But remember one thing, take it all positively because we also seen people who are affected, but they had a positive state of mind. They came out of it. OK, so be positive. Second is be practical. You know, just being positive is not enough. You have to think about it. Maybe look at the finances once again. You have to cut down on unnecessary expenses. So, you know, because there is so much uncertainty, but just say, OK, but on essentials, you have to spend, you have to uh, buy vegetables, fruits, all those are important. But, you know, this is also the right time to look at things practically. So always, you know, look at the next month, the three months, the six months, a year, because a lot of uncertainty around. But be practical about finances, you know, work out a new financial plan, talk to experts. So positive, practical, and most important, spiritual. Okay? So you have a spiritual friend because nature knows better than us. You know, we are trying to find out a vaccine. The vaccine will definitely come, but you have to understand one thing. Even if you find a vaccine for coronavirus, the nature can give you another virus. Look at, you know, a time when we did not have vaccine for uh, smallpox. We found it. Then became leprosy. We found a vaccine for it. Then AIDS. Again a vaccine came. We also find a coronavirus. But this is a cycle of nature. Nature is faster and smarter than you. But if you have a spiritual bent of mind, you will take it positively. Okay? So remember PPS, be positive, be practical, and be spiritual. Because a spiritual man is a person who has got a strength to face any challenges of life on a daily basis. So let me just sum it up the seven points as a takeaway for all of you. So let me start by saying the five things on a daily basis and two things during times of uncertainty. Morning time, wake up with a positive state of mind. Okay. Second is thinking time. Every day spend some quiet time with yourself, thinking contemplation. Third is basically study every day. Swadhyaya, spiritual and also your professional updates, magazines, research papers. If not three hours, of course, you can study three hours because now it's a complete lockdown. You're saving a lot of travel time and other time. Study every day. Fourth, documentation. Write down every day what you learned, Lord, and it's a great habit to develop and keep it lifelong. Fifth is parenting. Spend time with the family, with your parents, with your siblings. It's an amazing time to have great quality family time. Do it on a daily basis, even after the lockdown. Opens up, okay? And sixth point is basically about uncertainty, and that is be active even if there is no economic activity activity should continue even without economic activity okay so be active and the last point is pps be positive be practical be spiritual if you follow all these steps definitely you have understood chanakya and you will become a chanakya practice it daily and become successful in life thank you so much now i'm ready to take up any questions that you have, and I would request Pradeep sir to kindly moderate this particular Q&A with the limited time that we have. Thank you so much, Pradeep ji, and thank you all the listeners. Thank you for fantastic uh, session, uh, Doctor sir. And uh, yes, there are a few questions. Let me ask you a few questions that people have uh, said. First of all, there was an appreciation about the statement that you've made. 
showing the attitude with gratitude that was fantastic and wonderful statement uh, uh, someone has pointed that out and two people have liked it and uh, there are there is one question actually there are two questions from a known and unknown person first question is what uh, time should we sleep matlab aapne kaha ki 9 baje sona hai and 1:30 ko uthna hai but in daily life it, it becomes very impractical to sleep at 9 9 o'clock or 9:30 yeah. so what is your answer on that and second question is related to that someone has asked what is what should be the today's to do list at 1:30 am so uh, you may consider answering the, these two questions absolutely so please understand the guidelines that was given by chanakya to getting up uh, like sleeping at 9 o'clock and getting up at 1:30 is not directly practical in our generation okay this is something given during those days now please understand this i told also that on an average even modern psychologists you should have 6 to 7 hours of sleep okay now in chanakya's time 9 to 1:30 is 4 and 1/2 hours in the afternoon also it was given 1 and 1/2 hours so you know natural cycle animals and birds also sleep unfortunately we corporate guys working don't get sleep in the afternoon so the average is 6 hours now it all depends on you what is your starting and uh, sleeping time waking up and sleeping and especially if you look at it people who work in it companies in back offices in uh, bpos you know today you have to work maybe from different time zones if your office is in london your head office is in london your client is in australia you are stuck so you are working so what i'm saying that you have to decide what's the right time if you can actually follow practically the natural cycle of early morning getting up it's good but what i'm saying is that now you make a list saying that are you sleeping enough so you know 6 hours is an average thing but the length is not that important it's also the depth it is said that people who meditate who don't get stressed too much you know a lot of mental activity stresses you and even if you are sleeping you may not feel fresh you have to take rest but if you are doing uh, you know meditation and all those activities the quality of your sleep also increases the second question what should we do at 1:30 in today's generation please sleep at 1:30 okay don't look at whatsapp don't look at the media news 1:30 is the probably the real time to switch off even if the electricity is on i would suggest that please sleep at 1:30 what i'm saying is that maybe the natural cycle says that we don't have much uh, time now uh, we would suggest to sleep at 10 o'clock but it's not happened so at least try to sleep by 11 11:30 but what i'm saying that at least try and get up around 6 or 7 o'clock on a daily basis but 1:30 if you're waking up and doing something either you are a pisachi as they say you know the night man or you are a watchman so that's not your time so very different thing 1:30 is a time for deep quality sleep So plan out your schedule, whatever is practical, but make sure you have at least six hours of quality sleep, where your mind is fresh, and the moment you get up, you feel energized. So it's not the time; that it's your schedule, depending on your work and your family requirements. But quality and quantity of sleep makes you fresh. Thank you. Sir, we'll take two more questions. Uh, one uh, question is: If a senior colleague continuously do nagging or pinpoint our faults and doesn't listen to our version, what should we do? very 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 politically right question <laughs> because it's happened in lot of organizations where you know uh, there is something called as professional challenges so you only told about senior colleague okay but there are bosses who can be nagging they can be irritating okay and, you know now you have to first of all be quiet please understand in any situation chanakya would say please don't react okay please don't react that doesn't mean you should keep quiet okay there is a difference between reacting and responding there is a difference between reacting and responding reacting is very impulsive okay if somebody is nagging you mm, that that reaction okay or shout at him and give back responding is taking your time and then okay you're nagging me okay take a deep breath count up to 10 if your anger is going up your bp is going up calm down calm down go away you know maybe take 10 steps behind go away analyze the situation why is he nagging okay and then when you analyze it you may come to know certain reasons for why he or she is nagging you or irritating you if it's a temporary one off thing you know sometimes it may happen that the person may have an issue at personal or family level so he's just reacting to is like you hamesha to aisa nahi karta aaj kya ho gaya ghar pe kuch gadbad hai kya bolta so it's a one off thing you say theek hai but if it becomes a pattern it is continuously happening there's oh my goodness we have to understand it so what are you supposed to do is that check with others is he or she nagging everybody or is it my problem you know so let's say is a team leader as you said is a senior and the 20 people so you can get a feel of it and saying that okay 
all 19 remaining and me including 20 there's a problem with him that means it is not your problem he is the problem or she is the problem then what do you do so first of all if you analyze it you understand he is the problem or she is the problem today we have something called as 360 degree evaluation in company so the boss only doesn't rate you you can rate your boss so if there is a you are here the senior here and there is more senior if obulkan pani agar sarke upar chala jaye then you have to take that thing and many companies have whistle blowers you can be uh, uh, you cannot uh, necessarily give you out your name but you, you you put a complaint when i say complain i'm not saying against that person so that this is actually uh, affecting me or my work productivity so get the seniors involved you know and then try to solve the problem if you just become like a doormat that person will finish you another thing which i want to tell you is that is it coming also out of professional jealousy you know sometimes the juniors are more productive than the seniors that's why the seniors become like me because you may actually become a threat to the senior because you're already getting less than him or her and you're outperforming her so there can be a reason where you being around actually becomes an insecurity to your senior so please understand there are a lot of factors because of which the seniors can nag you so understand the factors if required take some professional counseling help so there are a lot of counselors available speak to somebody senior understand the situation but remember the formula don't react respond don't react respond have dignity okay don't have ego while dealing with your boss so you know you should have self respect and dignity and find a practical solution and keep your problem make sure that it is solved don't let the problem die by itself you know sorry no problem will be solved by itself you have to take some initiative and make sure the problem is solved all the best sir uh, there is a last question like i said uh, one person is asking how to stop procrast procrastination uh, and stay active and motivated all the time in this tough situation very true very nice question there is a saying in hindi you know it's a kabir ka doha kal kare so aaj kar aaj kare so ab you know but unfortunately we have uh, taken the kabir ka doha in a different way aaj kare so kal kar kal kare so parso itni bhi kya jaldi hai jab jeena hai barso and then ye janam mein nahi hua to agla janam to hai hi na we indians believe in the rebirth also <laughs> so how to stop procrastination so there are two three methods number one is called external help and internal discipline what is the meaning of external help okay so uh, you know whenever there is a project and you have this the good part is that you are aware see a lot of people are not even aware that procrastination has become a habit unko bola re isko late mat karo le ha chalta hai they become think it's normal so if you are aware you are post carrying then what you do take help of somebody for example what i do you know i i whenever i take up a project and it's a danger that i may cross the time limits of that then i tell my wife or my mother or my children also sometimes like dekho main book likh raha hu i have to complete in 6 months and they will come and ask me nagging you know papa kitna ho gaya book likh ke <laughs> and then suddenly you know i have to like okay because you have to write it in 6 months and sometimes if you are post scheduling it can become 6 months to 8 months to 1 year and then you may lose interest also so take somebody called as external buddy okay so when people go to gym also you know akele jane mein bore hota hai so you have a partner <laughs> so you decide a buddy a partner it could be from a family from a professional circle so it's like you must remind karte raho so you know your laziness is challenged by somebody outside the second important thing is that keep a daily record of self discipline so what happens every day you decide at 6 o'clock maybe in the initial stages that you lazily you don't complete the work not 6 o'clock become 6:30 after one week you see it's become a pattern then you punish yourself yes self punishment is a good way of training your mind acha abhi aadat ho gayi hai abhi aaj tumko ice cream nahi milega और यू नो आमरस नहीं मिलेगा अभी लॉकडाउन में जब आमरस खा रहे हैं सो समटाइम व्हाट हैपेंस यू हैव टू ट्रेन द माइंड सो माइंड इज आल्सो अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग अ ट्रेनड माइंड कैन बी अ वेरी वेरी पॉजिटिव थिंग एंड अनट्रेनड माइंड कैन बी द वर्स्ट रिसोर्स यू कैन हैव सो आई जस्ट टेल यू द वे टू हैंडल प्रोक्रेस्टिनेशन आइदर टेक एन एक्सटर्नल हेल्प और इंटरनल पनिशमेंट इफ यू बैलेंस दिस द माइंड विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्सन विल नॉट अलाउ मी टू बी टेकन फॉर ग्रांटेड it is all about mind management and self management i'm sure with chanakya's principle and chanakya in daily life you'll definitely achieve self discipline and become an inspiration to everybody around thank you so much and sir one question uh, i'm sorry i said two questions but one question this guy this gentleman is saying he is managing a team of 500 people one of which one of your book uh, would you want to recommend to him 
I would definitely start with corporate Chanakya. Okay, the reason being that uh, in corporate Chanakya, the 175 chapters. Okay, the many chapters in corporate Chanakya, but in that it is divided into three sections. One is called leadership, management, and the third is called training. Leadership, management, and training. So the whole thing about how to manage the teams is very much there in corporate Chanakya. Just to also tell you, it is not just managing the team; it's also inspiring a team. See, management means you know it's like you know okay, ये करना है वो करना है. But imagine, teams are consisting of human beings, and human beings have feelings. Okay, if you can actually develop the quality inside you to inspire a team, look at Shivaji Maharaj. You know, he did not have great resources. Most of the people were actually tribals, but when it came to a leader. they become productive many people blame the team members for being unproductive but i said it is the leader who makes them productive or unproductive so coming back corporate chanakya has got a lot of tips the second book also for information is chanakya seven secrets of leadership chanakya seven secrets of leadership but how d shivanandan my co-author who is a director general of maharashtra police actually inspired a complete team to die and clean up the underworld in mumbai you know there's a movie called company there's a uh, the the, the the hero mohan lal was actually the real the actor mohan lal played the role of d shivanandan was a mumbai police commissioner he had to clean up the whole mumbai city's crime and he did that so that's a case study book so corporate chanakya chanakya seven secrets of leadership but being an inspiring leader actually inspires a team and you will be a great team manager all the best thank you very much sir for uh, such a wonderful session and questions are still coming in almost there are more than 100 questions that we already have right now wow. but uh, because of time constraint we may not be able to take up but i'll send you the list of questions and if possible you can respond to any the questions we'll put it on the youtube channel link yes uh, and answer and second thing let me show you since sir has given plenty of topics so if you remember in our 15 days training program we learned about one note so you can see that i have documented each and everything in one note and uh, this recording is still going on if you remember the recording feature i have recorded and now when i stop recording now the thing is i can click any point and i can listen to the recording from that point in time if you remember and from the session of sir i have taken out some office 365 application that you can use in your daily life like oh. sir has said second thing thinking so if you remember we spoke about tasks in outlook you can use task in outlook as well as there is a to do list application you can download and use it second thing for documentation and record keeping you can use one note that i'm using yeah, right yeah. now sir also mentioned one thing about women making accounting list that can be done on excel on mobile we did ex- word on mobile but we did not speak much about excel on mobile but that you can do so there are plenty of application that you can use in daily life to keep yourself busy and these are the things from office 365 applications that we have done and let me tell you one thing that i learned from dr pillai sir he was giving a speech in hong kong i heard it in youtube and there was a very very fantastic statement that he made uh, he spoke about a incident where narendra modi was addressing a group of teachers and he asked a simple question since all of you are teachers how many of you students have invited you in their own marriage mm-hmm. sir <laughs> that, that was a speech in hong kong i search you on youtube crazily and listen to all your youtube uh, videos whatever i can find so he gave a fantastic answer and can can you please give that answer because i cannot say better than you do <laughs> yeah pranip ji so basically this was when uh, narendra modi ji Uh, had become uh, prime minister almost four five years ago. The first time he became a prime minister, so he called all the teachers and uh, he asked this particular interesting question: that how do you know whether you are a successful teacher? Imagine the prime minister is addressing the teacher, and they say, "Ek danda maap hai." There is one formula to check whether you have been a great teacher in your teaching career of ten years, fifteen years, twenty five years, whatever it could be. You know, how many of the children actually invited you for your wedding? And, and then he explained it very nicely because everybody was like, "What is kind of a question is he asking?" Then he said, "In our country, we have given importance to guru even higher than mother and father. Of course, you know, mother is the first guru, matro devo bhava, father is the second guru, pitru devo bhava, acharya devo bhava. But you will be surprised. No decision in life is taken without consulting a guru or a teacher. Even when Ram is going to fight, you know, uh, on uh, Ravana." 
Even Mahabharata, if you look at it, without the Kula Guru, Kula Guru is a very interesting thing. He is our traditional Guru. We would be definitely taking his permission in marriage, inviting him and all those things. Now, saying that, that is also an emotional bond. So, Modi ji was telling that, you know, maybe in your lifetime, in your class, you had 500 students. But did at least 10%, 20% of invite you. That means after passing out from the school or college, if they have forgotten you, that means they have not made an impact on your life and you have not made an impact on their life. So, in India, marriage is a big thing, isn't it true? हमारे यहाँ पे शादी में ये नहीं होता कि किसको इनवाइट करे हमारे यहाँ पे लिस्ट इतना बड़ा होता है कि किसको इनवाइट ना करे यू नो बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट मैनेज थाउजेंड पीपल स्पेशली विद बजट सो द होल आइडिया इज दैट इफ यू एज अ टीचर इज नॉट ऑन द लिस्ट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स फॉर अ मैरिज ओके दैट मीन्स यू आर नॉट मेड एन इम्पैक्ट दैट इज मीन एवरीबडी शुड गेट इन्वाइटेड वॉट आई एम इन द परसेंटेज वाइज इवन एफ फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आर इन टच विथ यू दैट मीन्स यू मेड एन इम्पैक्ट दैट्स वे चाणक्य चंद्रगुप्ता मौर्य कम्स एन So coming back, what Modi ji was trying to indicate is that you know you should continue guiding the children lifelong. It is not a, a degree course with two years of the teacher or ten years. No, no, no. It's an emotional bond, and your guru is with you throughout every challenges of the life. So the indication is that if you got invited to your marriage, that means you're still part of their family. So be a great teacher, be a great member of their family. They require you as a teacher. and a teacher also requires students to take care of their knowledge to be taken forward thank you thank you very much sir and since this was a learning session let me give you all uh, the last learning to all of you how should we learn this i learned from upanishad yeah. these are the four stages shravan manan chintan and nidhi dhyasan let me quickly explain this to you and then we'll wrap up the session in olden days there was no way of writing or reading so shravan was very, very important but now you can add reading and writing as well so when you listen listening or reading or writing itself is not important you need, you need to do manan manan means think about it think again and again as many times as you want think about it because you may come up with something that you have never thought before Sec then the third is chintan see you yourself may not be complete as a whole you may need to take help from your peers superiors or friends family so do chintan atma chintan as well as chintan amongst your society once you are you have completed these two things manan chintan then it comes with the nidhi dhyasan where you keep practice that thing again and again so that you do master those uh, techniques or those those uh, studies that is called as muscle memory i have heard from the ig of mumbai police when i was he was giving his uh, talk regarding the post 2008 uh, attack on mumbai they trained people in such a way that every day 100 times a person has to to reshuffle all the rifles and then dismantle everything and the idea was even at the darkness these people should be good enough when there is no light uh, at all these people should be able to assemble the rifle and fight the enemy just just to uh, non assembling ability of the rifle should not be the cause of uh, their death so that's the reason they trained uh, their employees or all the police personnel about the muscle memory so that is very important that is nothing but nidhi dhyasan in our shastra so friends uh, this was the learning for 15 plus 1 days and let me tell you that uh, once again i would request each one of you the motive of this session was to make the donation against the pm care fund or any other uh, charity organization of your choice because uh, uh, act of kindness matters here please make the donation if you think our 16 days effort mean anything to you many people have written to me that they have made the donation and ha i'm happy i'm sorry i'm not able to share the names and all the details because of uh, uh, 15 days we were completely busy we did not have time to create a presentation but we will definitely be sending the details to thank you note to all of them and one last thing like this we will be coming up with you uh, in our future sessions we will be doing one speaker expert speaker session every month so please keep this email address on your contact list so that you don't miss our emails our mails do not land in spam or junk folder so friends thank you very much i hope this was a great learning session to all of you thank you and see you soon thank you very much billai sir thank you very much for such a short notice accepting our request and coming online you're doing a great thank you sir thank you thank you very much thanks everyone take care